Millions in Syria and Iraq are facing water shortages as the region's longest river, the Euphrates, dries up. The Euphrates River, a symbol of ancient Mesopotamia, holds a remarkable history. It nurtured the world's first civilizations like the Sumerians and Babylonians, stretching 1,740 miles from Turkey to the Persian Gulf. In the past, it flowed alongside the hanging gardens of Babylon and attracted great leaders like Alexander the Great. But now, it's drying up, revealing hidden tunnels and treasures, including artifacts linked to Gilgamesh. The condition of the river has led to many questions and panic. Many ask why this is happening, while others believe it is a prophecy come true. Join us as we set off on a remarkable expedition to explore facts about the Euphrates River and uncover the secrets of a vanished civilization that have been uncovered. Number 11. A Mysterious Empire and Hidden Tablets of Zakiku In 2008, a severe drought in Iraq caused the Euphrates River's water levels to drop dangerously low. To provide water for crops, the Iraqi government had to drain the Mosul Dam Reservoir in Kurdistan. As the water receded, the ruins of an old city suddenly emerged. Archaeologists rushed against time to investigate and sketch the exposed ancient remains before they were submerged again. However, during the expedition, residents provided valuable information, explaining that the site existed before the construction of the Mosul Dam in the 1980s. Even more intriguing, Locals revealed that an earthquake in 1350 BCE had inflicted severe damage on the city. This earthquake had prevented the city from being thoroughly explored or documented until now. In a remarkable turn of events, parts of the city re-emerged. During this brief window, researchers had the opportunity to investigate structures they had never imagined existed there. Among their discoveries was what appeared to be a lost palace, a colossal ruin with towering 22-foot-high walls, some six feet thick, adorned with remnants of vivid red and blue wall paintings. Regrettably, archaeologists were unable to map the entire city before it was submerged once more. Fast forward to 2021, when drought once again exposed the ancient city, prompting researchers from the University of Tübingen in Germany to swiftly assemble at the site. This time, they were able to gain a clearer understanding of what this ancient metropolis might have been like. Among the structures they uncovered were an industrial complex, a fortified area with walls and towers and a multi-story storage facility. Further excavations revealed that this site was a significant center within the Mitanni Empire, often referred to as the Forgotten Empire. This empire thrived from around 1550 BC to 1360 BC, standing as one of the most prosperous kingdoms during the Bronze Age. Remarkably, the city's ancient sun-dried mud walls, submerged underwater for over 40 years, remained remarkably well-preserved, with some standing at nearly 10 feet in height. Adding to the intrigue, archaeologists discovered pottery vessels containing over a hundred cuneiform tablets, the world's earliest writing format. Some tablets were still intact, providing a remarkable link to the culture of the city's ancient inhabitants. These clay tablets, miraculously preserved over millennia, offer a glimpse into the lives of those who once called this city home. This remarkable discovery offers a captivating glimpse into the distant past and is a testament to the resilience of ancient civilizations hidden beneath the waters of time. Number 10. The Terrifying Cave Sounds in the dry lands near the empty Euphrates River, a strange mystery unfolded. Eerie sounds echoing from a cave. Talks about this sound first began when a local farmer toiling by the dry riverbed suddenly caught wind of something unusual. He described it as mysterious noises, like whispers carried by the wind. At first, he couldn't quite believe that these sounds emanated from the cave. But driven by curiosity, he couldn't resist getting closer. As he approached, the enigmatic sounds grew clearer, like mournful tones, strong and unceasing. Petrified, he returned to his village, recounting what he had experienced. Soon, the whole village was abuzz with eerie discussions about these strange cave sounds. Fascination and worry entwined as villagers decided to send a team to investigate further, accompanied by the farmer himself. Their journey into the cave proved to be astonishing. With every step closer, the strange sounds intensified, just like an underground symphony. The source of these eerie echoes became a heated argument. 
Some believed they were the voices of ancient spirits, while others thought they might be the sounds of falling angels, just as it is written in the Christian's biblical prophecy. If these strange sounds were from falling angels, does that mean these angels would soon come to earth to destroy one-third of the world's population? The mystery drew more people, all eager to decode the sound. But as the crowd grew, so did safety concerns. Recognizing the risks associated with this unusual attraction, the authorities took a decisive step. They sealed off the cave, leaving it once again shrouded in an enigma. The closure caused debates among the local folks. Some were sad to lose the strange cave sounds, while others felt safer knowing the cave was sealed. But the whole thing seems like someone is trying to hide something from us. The Euphrates, once a source of life, had transformed into a guardian of hidden mysteries. The Euphrates, which once brought life, had now become a guardian of secrets. It reminds us that even today, there are still mysteries waiting to be solved. Number 9. The Lost Tomb of King Gilgamesh The ancient city of Uruk, today known as Warka, was a city in the ancient Near East situated east of the present bed of the Euphrates River. Decades ago, there was a king named Gilgamesh. He was no ordinary king. He was a true hero. People in Uruk would tell stories of his incredible bravery, and his name would be remembered for ages to come. In an attempt to keep his city safe, Gilgamesh made friends with a fierce fighter called Enkidu. Together they faced and defeated scary monsters and fought against fierce enemies. One such enemy was Humbaba, a guardian of the cedar forest. In the year 2700 BCE, after Gilgamesh and Enkidu defeated Humbaba, they even cut down the ancient cedar trees from that forest. Felling the trees led to a lot of problems, as the forest gods were so enraged that they looked for a way to deal with Gilgamesh and Enkidu. In the year 2680 BCE, something very sad happened to Gilgamesh. In that year, the gods mysteriously took Enkidu away, and it filled Gilgamesh's heart with deep sorrow. After a short while, Gilgamesh decided to seek a way to live forever. It was so important to him that he had to embark on a long, dangerous journey to find a man named Utnapishtim, who had survived a great flood and become immortal in early 2650 BCE. Gilgamesh's journey was full of challenges and dangers. He faced fierce lions and dangerous scorpions, and he even crossed a vast sea to reach Utnapishtim. But when he finally met the immortal man, he learned that true immortality was not for humans. However, Utnapishtim did tell Gilgamesh about a special plant that could make him young again. In his quest for the plant, Gilgamesh faced a serpent who stole the precious herb from him. He returned to Uruk without the plant, but he had gained something even more valuable, a deeper understanding of life. Gilgamesh became a wiser and kinder king. He ruled Uruk for a very long time and made it a prosperous city. He showed everyone that the true way to be remembered forever was not through immortality, but through the legacy of one's actions. So, the hero of Uruk, Gilgamesh, lived between 2700 BCE and 2600 BCE. But his story has always been referred to as a mere fairy tale due to a lack of evidence. Recently, the Euphrates River has just been closed off as something huge finally emerged. The Lost Tomb of Gilgamesh. The quest for the lost tomb of Gilgamesh began when historians and archaeologists sought to unearth the reality behind the myth. Gilgamesh's adventures, as recounted in the epic, hinted at a burial of grandeur and significance. Could it be that the hero himself rested beneath the very lands he once ruled? The pursuit of this ancient enigma led experts to the Euphrates River's banks, a place where myths and reality converged, and their perseverance bore fruit an ancient structure was found. This structure, hidden for millennia beneath the river's silt and currents, bore all the hallmarks of a royal tomb. Its grandeur hinted at a hero's final resting place. As excavations continued, a trove of treasures emerged. Ornate artifacts, royal inscriptions, and relics that spoke of a time long past. The key to confirming the tomb's occupant lay in deciphering the inscriptions. The name Gilgamesh graced the walls, a testament to the hero's presence. Carbon dating places the tomb's construction at the time of his legendary reign, further solidifying the connection. Inside the tomb, Gilgamesh's remains were not found, but it was clear that this was a place of honor and remembrance. 
The epic tales did not exaggerate the grandeur of the hero's final abode. Instead, they preserved the truth. The discovery of Gilgamesh's tomb served as a bridge between myth and history, reaffirming the enduring power of his legend. It was a testament to the ancient civilization that revered him, and an opportunity for modern scholars to delve deeper into the hero's life. The lost tomb of Gilgamesh beneath the Euphrates River added a new chapter to his epic. It brought the hero from the realm of myth into the realm of archaeological discovery, proving that sometimes legends are rooted in reality. Number 8. Mountain of Gold – The Islamic Prophecy In recent years, the Euphrates River's decline has revealed long-buried treasures and layers of history. Among these treasures, a discovery has sent ripples of excitement and speculation throughout the Islamic world. According to Islamic religion, it was revealed to Prophet Muhammad that a time will come when the Euphrates River recedes, unveiling a mountain of gold. This mountain, it is believed, will carry great significance, ushering in a period of profound transformation. Now, fast forward to the present day, where the Euphrates River indeed lies in a diminished state, a shadow of its former self. As researchers and explorers comb its barren riverbed, they stumble upon a revelation that seems too remarkable to be a coincidence. Hidden beneath layers of silt and history, they unearth a colossal structure, constructed entirely of gold. It glimmers, almost surreal in its radiance, and its discovery is nothing short of miraculous. The parallels between this real-life revelation and the Islamic prophecy are striking. The drying of the Euphrates has uncovered a mount of gold, just as foretold. This stands as an intricate interplay between faith, history, and the inexorable passage of time. As the news of this discovery reverberates across the globe, it ignites a fervor of speculation. What could this golden mountain signify? Is it a symbol of prosperity? Or does it carry a deeper spiritual message that we should all be scared of? Regardless of interpretation, as we gaze upon this mountain of gold, we are reminded that the threads of prophecy can weave their way into the fabric of reality in the most astonishing ways. Number 7. The Turkish Dam In 1920, the Euphrates River's allocation among Iraq, Syria, and Turkey was formalized by the Treaty of Sevres. This agreement established a somewhat equal distribution of the river's water, with Syria and Iraq receiving about 58% of the flow, while Turkey got around 42%. However, as years went by, Turkey started to build a series of dams along the Euphrates. One of the most significant projects was the Ataturk Dam, completed in 1990, which could store a massive amount of water. Over the years, Turkey constructed more dams and reservoirs, allowing it to better control the river's flow. Today, Turkey's dam infrastructure gives it the ability to manipulate water flow, which naturally impacts the downstream countries, Syria and Iraq. With these dams, Turkey can store water during wet periods and release it strategically during dry times, which can significantly affect the water levels in Syria and Iraq. Additionally, Turkey's growing water needs for agriculture and industry have led to increased water consumption. This further reduces the amount of water flowing downstream to Syria and Iraq. This situation has created tensions between the countries, with Syria and Iraq expressing concerns about their decreasing access to Euphrates water. They argue that Turkey's construction of dams and increased water usage have affected their ability to manage their water resources effectively. As a result, there have been diplomatic negotiations and disputes over water sharing among these nations. They have sought to find a balance that ensures Turkey's water needs are met, while also addressing the concerns of Syria and Iraq, who rely heavily on the Euphrates River for agriculture and daily life. Unfortunately, despite all efforts to share the water flow equally between Iraq, Syria, and Turkey, those efforts were not enough. Many now point fingers that Turkey's construction of sophisticated dams resulted in the drainage. Number 6. Tunnels Amidst the ancient sands of Mesopotamia, where history's ink was first etched, a profound engineering secret lay hidden beneath the waters of the Euphrates River, the enigmatic aqueducts. These subterranean marvels birthed around 2500 BCE during the zenith of Sumerian brilliance, silently narrate a tale of ingenuity and life-sustaining mysteries. 
Their most vital role was like a lifeline for agriculture. During a scorching summer or a freezing winter in Mesopotamia not ideal for crops, these waterways came to the rescue. It ensured that fields beyond the riverbanks received the water they needed for a fruitful harvest. But these aqueducts did more than just help crops grow. They quenched the thirst of the people, provided water for everyday tasks, and even played a part in creating ancient written records, like scribes using this precious water to craft clay tablets, preserving the wisdom of the time in cuneiform script. The engineering behind these tunnels was astonishing. They had clever systems of gates and sluices to control the flow of water, a bit like modern plumbing. Their designs were precise, making sure the water flowed smoothly across long distances. These weren't just water channels, they were the lifeblood of entire civilizations. These aqueducts didn't fade away with time. More surprisingly is how these channels have lived underwater for so long. The tunnels faithfully served the people of Mesopotamia for centuries, supporting empires like the Akkadians, Babylonians, and Assyrians. While many of them eventually vanished under layers of history, archaeologists keep uncovering their remnants. Each discovery offers a glimpse into the sophisticated water management of ancient civilization. Now it's time for today's subscriber's pick. The dried-up Euphrates riverbed has become a treasure trove of ancient finds. Many discoveries have emerged from this dry land. However, a recent image that surfaced on the internet has left people intrigued and a bit uneasy. What's unsettling about this image is that it shows four archaeologists straining to pull out a mysterious object they found in the Euphrates River. What makes it even more puzzling is that, when you examine the picture closely, you realize that it was taken when the river was still flowing with water and life. Now this raises questions. Why were archaeologists so interested in this river before it dried up? What have they found in this river before it dries up that they've hidden from the public eye? The object they're struggling with, wrapped in white, holds secrets. Could it be an ancient piece from a temple, a massive carved stone, or a fragment of a forgotten chapter of history? We don't have all the answers yet, but it's a captivating mystery waiting to be unraveled. As you look at this photograph, consider what these archaeologists might be hiding and share your thoughts in the comments below. Number 5. Daily Life of the Zakiku People While working at an ancient archaeological site of Kamuni in Iraq, German archaeologist Peter Faltzner found religious texts written in the Hurrian language. As the oldest language of the Zakiku people who first lived in the Mitanni kingdom, these texts provide a window into their spiritual world. In these inscriptions, the Mitanni people expressed their devotion to a pantheon of deities. Some of the most frequently mentioned gods include Teshub, the storm god, and his consort Hepat. Teshub was often invoked for protection and assistance, especially during times of need. One common feature of Mitanni religious texts is the offering of prayers and hymns to these deities. These prayers were likely recited during religious ceremonies and rituals, and they sought the favor and blessings of the gods. The Mitanni people believed that their gods had the power to influence various aspects of life, including agriculture, fertility, and protection from enemies. The religious texts also contain references to specific rituals and sacrifices. These rituals were performed as a way to communicate with the gods and ensure their goodwill. Sacrifices of animals, such as sheep or cattle, were common, and the choice of animals often depended on the nature of the request or the deity being addressed. One interesting aspect of the Mitanni religion is the syncretism or blending of deities from different cultures. The Mitanni Empire was situated in a region where various civilizations interacted, including the Hittites and Hurrians. This interaction led to the incorporation of gods from neighboring cultures into Mitanni religious practices. For example, you can find references to Hittite deities like the weather god Tarhunt in Mitanni texts. Studying these religious texts not only provides us with a glimpse into the spiritual world of the Mitanni people, but also highlights the rich tapestry of cultural exchange and syncretism that characterized the ancient Near East during this period. Number 4. The Untold Origin of the Euphrates River The Euphrates River has an origin story as captivating as its meandering journey. To understand its beginnings, we must delve into the rugged landscapes of eastern Turkey 
where the river's epic tale begins. Picture yourself in the highlands of Anatolia, a region adorned with rugged mountains and pristine valleys. Nestled amidst this stunning scenery lies the birthplace of the Euphrates, a cluster of icy springs near the town of Erzurum. These crystalline springs, shrouded in myth and history, are the true source of the mighty river. From this point, the Euphrates embarks on its arduous journey, swiftly descending from the mountains like a newborn eager to explore the world. It gathers momentum, carving its course through the rocky terrain. As it flows, smaller tributaries join its ranks, contributing their waters to the ever-growing stream. These tributaries, like storytellers adding their voices to an epic saga, weave tales of their own into the river's narrative. As the Euphrates progresses, it enters a land of enchantment, the Fertile Crescent. Here, the river's life-giving waters nurture civilizations that span millennia. Ancient Mesopotamia, home to the world's earliest cities, owes its prosperity to the Euphrates. Its waters provide sustenance for crops, facilitating the rise of agriculture and, subsequently, the birth of human civilization. The river's journey, however, is not without its challenges. In its relentless quest for the Persian Gulf, the Euphrates face the unforgiving deserts of southern Iraq. Here it dwindles and weaves through intricate channels, an intricate dance of survival in an unforgiving environment. Yet even in the harshest of conditions, the Euphrates refuses to surrender. As the river approaches its climax, it merges with its ancient sibling, the Tigris, in the land between two rivers, Mesopotamia's heart. This confluence, a breathtaking union of two life-giving forces, symbolizes the river's resilience and its role in shaping the region's history. Finally, the Euphrates embarks on its grand finale, a dramatic conclusion to its epic journey. Its waters mingle with the brackish tides of the Persian Gulf, an end that mirrors its beginnings, a transition from obscurity to significance. The Euphrates River's origin, tucked away in the Turkish mountains, may seem unassuming, but its journey is nothing short of legendary. It has carved its story across the annals of history, nourishing civilizations and shaping destinies. From icy springs to the shores of the Persian Gulf, this river is more than just water. It is a lifeline, a storyteller, and a witness to the grand tapestry of human existence in the ancient lands it calls home. Number 3. The Hidden Ecosystem of Euphrates Long before the Euphrates River dwindled to a mere memory of its former glory, this majestic waterway nurtured an ecosystem of unparalleled beauty and biodiversity. It was a vibrant and thriving world where life flourished in every corner, painting a picture of nature's grandeur. The Euphrates was a lifeline for countless species, both aquatic and terrestrial, the flowing waters were teeming with fish, including species like the iconic Euphrates softshell turtle and the mighty shad. These waters were not just a source of sustenance, but also a playground for myriad bird species that swooped down to snatch their aquatic prey. The riverbanks were a mosaic of lush vegetation and reed beds, creating a haven for a rich tapestry of wildlife. Amongst the tall reeds, waterfowl like herons, egrets, and kingfishers stalked their prey, while songbirds filled the air with their melodious tunes. As you ventured away from the riverbanks, the ecosystem transformed into a desert oasis. Date palms and tamarisk trees provided shade and sustenance for both animals and humans. The Arabian oryx with its majestic horns gracefully roamed these arid lands, while the nimble Nubian ibex skillfully navigated rocky outcrops. Under the water's surface, freshwater mussels thrived, acting as nature's water purifiers. Their presence ensured the health of the river ecosystem by filtering sediments and pollutants and maintaining the river's pristine clarity. The Euphrates' rich biodiversity didn't stop at its banks. It extended to the wetlands and marshes that flourished in its floodplains. These wetlands were vital breeding grounds for waterfowl, amphibians, and countless invertebrates, all contributing to the intricate web of life that sustained the region. But alas, over time, the once mighty Euphrates began to dwindle, its waters diverted for agriculture and industry. The ecosystems that had thrived for millennia found themselves struggling to survive in the face of diminishing flows. Wetlands dried up, fish populations dwindled, and once lush oases withered away. 
Today, the story of the Euphrates River is a cautionary tale, a reminder of the delicate balance of nature and the profound impact human activities can have on the ecosystems that once flourished along its banks. While efforts are being made to restore and conserve this iconic river and its surrounding habitats, the memory of its past glory serves as a powerful reminder of the need to protect and cherish the natural world that once called it home. Number 2. The Fertile Crescent In the heart of what we now call Iraq, a remarkable tale began to unfold. This tale revolved around a land shaped by the whims of two mighty rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates. It was a land known as the Fertile Crescent. In the beginning, this land was nothing more than a patchwork of small villages, but it held a secret fertile soil, nourished by the annual floods of the rivers. As people began to till this bountiful land and domesticate animals, the Fertile Crescent witnessed the birth of agriculture. It marked the transition from nomadic hunter-gatherer tribes to settled farming communities. As time flowed on, the Fertile Crescent earned its title as the Cradle of Civilization. In the shadow of the Great Rivers, city-states like Ur and Uruk emerged. Here, the Sumerians etched their stories and achievements onto clay tablets, giving birth to one of the world's first writing systems, cuneiform. Mighty empires rose and fell within this crescent of fertility. The Akkadians, Babylonians, and Assyrians took turns in the limelight. The city of Babylon, under the wise rule of King Hammurabi, gifted humanity one of its earliest legal codes, the Code of Hammurabi. Epic tales echoed through these lands. The Epic of Gilgamesh, a story of a Sumerian king's quest for immortality, captured the essence of human desires and fears. It was within these fertile bounds that cultures clashed and blended, creating a mosaic of traditions, beliefs, and knowledge. Yet the Fertile Crescent faced its share of challenges. The same rivers that brought life also brought destruction with their unpredictable floods. Managing water resources became paramount, leading to innovative irrigation systems. Conflicts among city-states and empires punctuated periods of turmoil. At present time, the legacy of the Fertile Crescent endures. Its historical importance, from the birth of writing to the codification of laws and the construction of monumental architecture, continues to shape our world. Number 1. Bible's Prophecy The Christians have their version and explanation of why the Euphrates River dried up. In the Christian book, the Bible, particularly in the book of Revelation, there is a prophecy regarding the Euphrates River. The specific prophecy is found in Revelation 16.12, which reads, Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. This verse is part of a series of apocalyptic visions in the book of Revelation, which is the final book of the New Testament. These visions are attributed to the Apostle John and describe a sequence of events that are often interpreted as the culmination of human history and the coming of the end times. The drying up of the Euphrates River is seen as a significant event in these prophecies. It is believed by some interpreters to symbolize the removal of an obstacle or barrier that allows the kings from the east to march westward unhindered. The identity of these eastern kings and the exact nature of their role in the apocalyptic events are subjects of debate among biblical scholars and religious traditions. Interpretations of this prophecy vary widely, with some seeing it as a metaphorical or symbolic representation of spiritual or political events, while others view it as a literal prediction of future events. As with many passages in the book of Revelation, interpretations are influenced by religious beliefs and theological perspectives. It's important to note that interpretations of biblical prophecies can vary significantly among different religious denominations and scholars, and there is no single universally accepted interpretation of this particular prophecy. Still, many Christian believers today see the massive drought of the Euphrates River as the coming true of the biblical prophecy. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next one.